Hello, my name is Monica Zinke. I'm the executive director of Fresh Start, and I want to start by saying thank you to all of you for your support of our program. As most of you know, we are a program for women experiencing homelessness. We're located over in Havelock, and we have, during a non-pandemic, we have 24 women that live with us at any time and stay with us and work with the case manager while they're working to move out of homelessness and back into a home of their own. So that's what we do. Um, we have been involved with the Unitarians for a long, long time, almost since the beginning, I think, um, with Reverend Charles and with lots and lots of people from your congregation on our board and as volunteers and as donors and supporters. So I just wanted to thank you for everything that you do for us. And I wanted to share an example of somebody that we have served recently. Um, so we had, I'm going to call her Mary, just for confidentiality. Mary moved out recently. She'd been living at Fresh Start with us for almost 10 months. She also had been in the Fresh Start program several years ago, but had hit some new struggles and came back into the program and um, had just gotten sober again and was looking to build a positive support network, work on improving her boundaries and work on getting a job so that she could get back into a place of her own. And during that almost 10 months that she was at Fresh Start, she accomplished all of those things. She found a job. She actually saved up a couple of thousand dollars in savings while she was there. And she she's still working on boundaries, but she had put some in place with people and was working on building a positive support network and had maintained her sobriety and had support for that. And so we, it's her success. You know, we provide the environment that is an empowering environment and a place where she can live safely and with emotional safety, not just physical safety and with people there to support her. So we provide the environment and she takes all those really important steps while she's at Fresh Start. And that's what you all are supporting every time you do something with Fresh Start, every time you're involved with us. So thank you so much. Of course. Um, so how many women uh, do you, you know, serve in a normal year? Normally we have anywhere, usually it's 70 to 80 women that we serve in a year. In 2020, it was less because we set aside some rooms to have space if somebody needed to quarantine because we didn't want to have to ask somebody to leave to protect the rest of the house. We didn't want to have to ask somebody to leave if they had to test positive for COVID or have some other um, you know, contagious disease. So we had reduced occupancy in 2020 and into 2021. But normally we're serving 75 to 80 women every year in the residential program. And then some of them continue with us for community support services where we have um, monthly home visits or by phone right now, um, home visits and food baskets and 24 seven support from the shelter staff for mm -hmm. them as well. So, yeah. so would you say that was your greatest challenge during the pandemic, this that you had to reduce the, the, the space yeah, in, in some ways that was not a challenge because we just did it as people moved out because of course we didn't just ask people to leave to reduce our occupancy. But the challenge came from trying to be as supportive as possible while maintaining distance. <laughs> so our program is really built around connections with people and building rapport and, and checking in on them. And with the pandemic, it was really hard to say, don't come within six feet, but how you doing? Like, <laughs> everything okay? So that was our challenge. And then it was challenging to have reduced occupancy, but still have a wait list. So knowing that there were people there that needed our program, and because of the state of the world, we couldn't offer them a spot. We, we went down to 16. We went down to 14, actually, at one point, um, based on HUD, HUD guidelines. So that was hard for us to know that people needed our service and that they couldn't move in when we had spots just empty, just sitting there empty. Um, so that that was the, the challenge for us is, is building and maintaining those connections and the heartbreak of knowing that we had openings that we couldn't use. Of course. So um, I know that we have been doing uh, dinner with the women once a month for a while now. Um, yeah. What do I understand correctly that that's going to open back up or has opened back up for us to have dinner with folks? Yes, 
So because the, the risk dial for our community has, has been going down and then now is held steady, we are allowing visitors back in the building. And so that includes our Sunday night supper people. And um, I'm not often there on Sunday nights anymore, but I love that the Unitarians come and expect to be there and share with the residents. Um, it's fine if people drop it off, but it's a different feeling for the residents knowing that people want to stay and have supper with them um, because they just experience so much fear and stereotypes that, that of course the Unitarians don't have that and they go beyond by actually being there with them. So we're excited to have you all come back and be in the shelter. Um, you are one of the groups that has kept bringing suppers all through the pandemic. You've just been dropping them off. It's still been coordinated and dropping off instead of coming to the shelter for health reasons. And so we really appreciated that continuity for the residents and that they had that, that gift of the Sunday night supper all through 2020 and into 2021. Yeah. So I understand there's some things coming up this summer that you might want our members to know about that they can help with or participate in. Yeah, there's lots of ways to support Fresh Start. You know, you can always volunteer. You can always be involved in the Sunday night suppers. Um, donate, of course, needed items, not just money. Um, but this year is also our 30th anniversary. So we'll have some kind of event this summer. We're still figuring out the details because we couldn't plan ahead, you know, until we kind of knew what the health measures would need to be. Um, so I ask people to kind of watch our Facebook page, our okay. Twitter, our website, because it is our 30th anniversary and we're excited to celebrate an anniversary this year. Um, and I know it's the church's anniversary too. So we have, we have an anniversary year in common. Yep. So um, you mentioned that there are things that people can contribute besides money. What are the things that you need the most? A lot of times it varies with the season. So now that we're heading into summer, we often need things like bug spray and suntan lotion and reusable water bottles. Um, we always need hygiene products, but sometimes the type of product varies. So um, but body wash, we often run low on body wash. They tend to use that more than bar soap because they take things back and forth to their rooms. Um, so hygiene supplies like that and the summer summer related items or okay. things that we'll look at right now yeah and um i think all year long you take things also that you give to women who are setting up their apartments for the first time right like cleaning yes. products and yes. um, tools cleaning tools and products mm -hmm. yeah okay. so we also take cleaning supplies for the house so um and laundry detergent because we have the laundry room there. But the other thing that we take those for is for women in their own home. So okay. we try and give them things when they first move out um, so that they kind of have a little bit of a stockpile. And then in those quarterly food baskets or those monthly home visits that we can bring them things like, I mean, sometimes we're bringing them toilet paper, things that are they all add up. It's costly. <laughs> the cleaning sure, supplies sure. cost a lot of money. So anything that we can give to them to supplement is important. Um, for the women in the house and the women that move out, a lot of times gas cards are really needed. Um, if they're fortunate that they have a vehicle and they're, but they're still looking for work, it's hard to have gas money to go to job search. So, um, so we always can use things like gas cards too for both the women moving out and some of the women in the shelter. Bus passes too, or? Bus passes. Um, StarTran actually had the buses for free and they might even still be free. I'm not sure. I haven't checked recently. Um, they were, they, they, during the pandemic, they'd had them for free. Yeah. So, um, so we have bus passes right now, um, but that is something that we also often need because we can buy them for the reduced rate, the low income rate. So um, people can donate the bus passes themselves, or they can donate funds for us to go and purchase them at the reduced rate so that then we can get more than if you bought it yourself, because we can get them for $8. Um, right. but otherwise, the bus passes are important um, because there's a bus stop right across the street from, from the shelter. So a lot of the ladies take the bus. Yeah. Okay. One question I have also is, uh, it, am I correct that there's, there are not children? It's only the women 
that stay at the shelter or is yes. That, okay. Mm -hmm. So Fresh Start's target population is women that don't have children or don't have children with them. So usually every year over half of the women are moms. So we do a lot of work strengthening families through the mom. Um, but they don't but they don't have to have kids and we're not licensed to shelter children. So we have some that their kids are all grown up and it's their grandkids that are visiting them. We have some like Mary that I mentioned that doesn't have any kids. We have some whose kids are living with another relative or a friend or in state custody and they're working to get them back or working to get back into their own place so that they can have them live with them again instead of with their mom. Um, but at shelter, it's women without children. And that's because it takes them a lot longer to get services typically because a lot of things are prioritized for kids. And so that's why Fresh Start chose that population when we were founded because they were at the bottom of all the wait lists. So they're kind of the underserved within this underserved group of homelessness. And that's why it's women without children. Sure. It's also where we have a stay of up to a year because it takes longer to get services. So you can stay at Fresh Start longer than you can a typical shelter. That makes sense. The only other question I can think of is that you mentioned also that there's opportunities for volunteering. Can you describe a couple of, you know, jobs that people might have if they were to volunteer? Yeah, our biggest ongoing volunteer project is the Daisy Thrift Shop. So that is completely run by volunteers and they are amazing. It's a wonderful group of women. Um, the shop manager is a volunteer, the shop clerks are all volunteers. And so that is our biggest volunteer need because they're open Thursdays, uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So we need volunteers for all of those days. And it's also our biggest fundraiser. When we're able to be open, unlike during COVID time, um, they raised over $40,000 for us in 2019. And it's all volunteers. So that's, that's our biggest one. We also have volunteers on our board of directors and on our committees of the board. And that includes our events committee. So if there's somebody that loves to plan events, or loves logistics, um, they can come and help us plan Project Funway in the fall, for example, or um, this year we already have the anniversary event going, but we always have different events. And then we have volunteers that come in sometimes to help with office or help on donation days because we often only have two staff members there. So it's helpful to have a volunteer on the days that we take donations. Um, as we open up more for visitors, um, then we sometimes have people come in that do groups or do arts and crafts projects with the ladies and they, they love things like that. So there's lots of different ways to volunteer from a one day project or group to an ongoing commitment. Sure. sure. And uh, is the Daisy open now? The Daisy is open now. It was closed for almost eight months of 2020, um, but starting in April, we've been open our regular hours. And it's Thursday from 4 to 7 p.m. And then on Fridays and Saturdays, we're open 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Yeah. Great. Well, I really appreciate your time today. I will you know, be sure to share this um, with everyone and we'll be happy to hear that things are getting back to normal a little bit for y'all. Yes. And, and thank you again so much to to you, Jean, personally, I know I've shared how much I've appreciated you and so many people in the congregation personally and then also for Fresh Start because we, we don't do this alone. We only do this because of the community that supports us and everybody that comes together. So we really appreciate everything that you all do for social justice and for involving Fresh Start in your efforts. So thank you. Thanks. Thanks for being here today.